Hello my dear students I welcome you all to Engineers Academy do hit the subscribe button if it helps in your learning now we are going to solve this problem which says that the uniform thin pole has a weight of 30 pound and a length of 26 feet if it is placed against the smooth wall and on the rough floor in the position d equals to 10 feet will it remain in this position when it is released the coefficient of static friction is 0.3 now the wall is smooth there will be no friction at point b and there will be a friction force at point a but we have to find out that whether this pole will remain in this particular position when when we release it or not right so we have to uh, conclude it right we have to find the result that whether the pole will keep standing or not so to in order to prove this again uh, if if this pole remains in this position so it must be in equilibrium right so so in order to find that we will assume that let's say let's assume that the pole is in equilibrium let's assume that that it is in equilibrium so if it is in equilibrium then the friction at a will be equal to mu s which is 0 0.3 times an a the normal force and if it is if the pole is just on the verge of slipping then this f a will be equal to 0 0.3 times an a and that will be the maximum friction if it is on the verge of slipping so when the when the pole is just on the verge of slipping the surface at a can provide the maximum friction of 0 0.3 times an a so now once once we assume that uh, that the pole is in equilibrium so then we have to find out find out that whether the fa the friction at a is uh, greater than or equal to fa max right so if we as if we find out that fa the actual friction value for the assumption is let's say less than fa max so then this condition will tell us that the pole will remain stationary right that will be uh, and if f a is greater than f a max then this will prove that our assumption is not right assumption is not valid since while considering the equilibrium the friction the surface can offer cannot be greater than this so now if if f a the friction offered by the surface while considering this assumption is greater than f a max so it's not possible the surface cannot provide uh, more friction than this value so it's obvious that the assumption is not valid so if the assumption is not valid the pole will will not remain in its position so then we have now for this particular case we have to prove that this the friction offered by the surface while considering the equilibrium must be less than fa max so we have to find fa max value for that we have to find an a and and while considering the equilibrium condition we have to find this fa which is the actual value of fa so if this fa comes out to be less than this fa max then the pole will remain in its position so now let's uh, consider all the forces so the surface at b will provide the normal force in this direction there will be no friction at at point b since the wall is smooth so here we will have n b this is n b and at a we will have the normal force in the upward direction this is n a and if the pole is slipping towards the right we will have the friction force towards the left so let's say we will have the friction force and we are not sure that whether this fa is max or uh, less than max so we will as we will consider it as only fa we, we will not equate it to mu s times and a since we do not know so we will just write that this is fa and the weight of the pole is going to act at its mid length so the length is 26 so the weight is going to act somewhere here let's see and this is 30 pounds now let's say that uh, let's say that this corner is let's say point O 
Now we have this right angle triangle, OAB triangle. This D length is given. This is 10 feet. Let me write that this is 10 feet. Now to find this OB length, we have to apply the Pythagoras theorem. So now we can say that the hypotenuse square, the hypotenuse is AB. The length of the pole, that is 26 square, is equal to OB square plus 10 square, that is OA square. So from this we can say that OB is equal to 26 square minus 10 square under the square root. And now 26 square minus 10 square gives us 24 feet. So OB length is 24 feet. So now this is, now this length, this OB length, this is 24 feet. Now since we have, we, we are assuming that the pole is in equilibrium, so we, we can apply the equilibrium conditions and we can say that the summation of forces along X, this must be equals to zero. And this is our positive x direction. So now as we can see that this n b is acting in the positive x direction. So I will write plus n b. And the friction force is acting in the negative x. So I will write minus f a. And this is equal to 0. And from this we can say that f a is equal to n b. The normal force which the walls applies on the pole at point b. Now if I apply the summation of forces along y direction that must be equals to zero this is our positive y direction in the upward y in the upward direction is is our positive y direction so as we can see that this and a is acting in the upward direction so i will write plus and a and the weight is acting in the downward direction so that is minus 30 and this is equal to zero so and a is equal to 30 pounds and now if I apply the summation of moment, the summation of moment about point A equals to zero. And if we assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive. So now as we can see that uh, this NA is producing the clockwise moment about this point A. So I will write minus NB. Since the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive, so NB is producing the clockwise moment. So the perpendicular distance of NB from that point A is this 24 feet. So this is the moment arm for NB. So I will multiply it with 24. And this weight is going to produce the counterclockwise moment about point A. And if I extend the line of action of this, so this point will be at a distance of 5 feet from this particular point. Since it is the midpoint of this 26 feet, so this will also be this intersection point of the line of action of this weight will be also the midpoint of this D. So this means that the perpendicular distance of this 30 pound the weight from that point A is 5 feet. So that is the moment arm. So we can write that the weight is producing the counterclockwise moment. So that is plus 30 and the moment arm or the perpendicular distance of this weight from that point A is 5 feet. So we have to multiply it with 5 and this is equal to 0. So now we can say that minus NB into 24 equals to minus 13 to 5. Minus will cancel out and from this we can say that NB is 30 into 5 divided by 24. So 30 into 5 divided by 24. This gives us NB equals to 6.25 pounds. Now for the assumption when we assume that uh, let's say that the pole is in equilibrium then f a is equal to n b and n b is equal to 6.25 so we can say that for these conditions the f a is equal to 6.25 and pounds and now since we know that f a max is 0 0.3 times n a so now let's find that f a max So that is 0 0.3 times Na, and Na is 30 pounds. So let's multiply it with 30. So 0 0.3 into 30, 0 0.3 into 30, this gives us 9 pounds. So the surface can offer a maximum friction of 9 pounds. But when we, when, when we are assuming that the pole is in equilibrium, the friction which is offered 
the actual friction that is when, 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 when that is offered by the by the floor at a is 6.25 pounds which is less than 9 pounds so this means that if fa is less than fa max so the pole remains stationary this means that our assumption is that this means that our assumption of equilibrium is right if this fa comes out to be greater than this fa max if if we if we had a value of fa equals to let's say 9.2 pounds so then that 9.2 pounds is, is greater than fa max and then from the assumption of equilibrium we cannot get the fa value greater than fa max since when the pole is on the verge of slipping the surface can only provide a maximum friction of 9 pounds so we cannot get the value of fa greater than the, than this 9 pounds by assuming that the pole is in equilibrium so if this comes out that if fa is less than fa max which in our case is right fa is less than fa max so from this we can conclude that when we release the pole it will remain in its position so yes we will say that yes the pole remains in its position when it is released so this is the solution of this particular problem let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning do subscribe engineers academy and share it with your friends and classmates in order to reach out many more students